Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Promo. And today we're gonna to talk about a few personalizations and customizations that you might not have known that you're able to do on your Samsung Galaxy device. Now, some of these are very simple, but also very useful. Now, the first one that I wanna to cover today is a way that you're able to move multiple apps at the same time. Now, you can do this inside of the app tray or even with some of these uh, applications and icons on your home screen. So sometimes, let's say that you go through and maybe there's a few that you wanna move around. You know that you're gonna probably move this one over here, uh, and then maybe you wanna move this one over here. But what you're able to do is if you actually just do a press and hold and you do select, and then you select this one, and however many you would like to do, when you press and hold, they actually both move with you, you know, at the exact same time. Uh, and because these were just right there, you know, I, mean, I mean, they just went right back to where they were in the first place. So let's say that I wanted to move, you know, a few more, you know, I'd be able to maybe, let's say, do all of these ones right here. So this is moving several of them, maybe over into this screen over here, and that's how you can move multiple things at once. Now, just to clean this up a little bit, I do want to move these right back over to where they were. Uh, and then what I wanna do is show you that you can also do this inside of the app tray. Now, inside of here, you can do a couple things. So again, you can move these ones to your home screen or what you can do is let's say there's multiples of these and then you can just add them as a, you know, create a folder for them. Or if you want, bring them right over into either another page or into your home screen and then you can see them all floating right here. You just let them all go and now they're sitting right there. And now because this one is pretty ugly for me, I don't want any of these to be on the screen right here. Uh, I'm just gonna go up here and hit on remove. Now next up is a way that you're able to customize and save, let's say a split screen that you use all the time. So let's say that we go in and we do YouTube and then maybe we also do Twitter as well. Now, all you'd have to do is whenever you have these applications opened, all you have to do is a swipe up and then now you have both of those sitting there. This is where you can tap on the little icon. And then once you tap on the icon, you can do open and split screen view. And then you just go right with this recent application. Now, if you don't wanna have two of them open at the exact same time, so let's say that we you know, get rid of YouTube over here. We just have Twitter that's being left over. We go inside of split screen view. We have no recents, but now we can just go right over here and then we can select what other application we would like to have on the bottom. So this way you'd be able to have two running at the same time, but from here, you're able to save them. Now, once you save them, you can put it inside of your apps edge panel. So as long as you have your edge panels turn on, it'll be saved inside of your apps edge panel, or if it's one that you use all the time, move it to your home screen. So then this way, all you'd have to do is swipe over. Uh, you just have to find whichever one you have. And then now once you open it up, it's gonna be opened up for you. So again, it's a way you can personalize and customize your Samsung phone. Now, the third one I wanna cover is very similar to what we just got done doing, but it's a way to get into that split screen. So when you have your application opened, you swipe up from the bottom with two fingers, and then now you're able to go inside and you can you know, get your split screens going. Now, again, through here, you can bring this little middle all the way down if you wanna just go right back to your YouTube. You can tap right here, you can flip flop them, or you can also save them as a favorite. Now, how you're able to get this done is you wanna go inside of your settings, then you're gonna scroll down to where it says advanced features, and then you go to Samsung Labs, and this is the very bottom option here. Swipe for split screen, and you can just watch the little animation to show you how you can do it, and you can also read about it. Now, feature number four is one that I love, especially because I do have children, and it's a way that they are able to not get out of an application. So, you know, it could be YouTube, uh, or it could also be uh, whatever, maybe YouTube Kids, maybe one of their games they love to play, and sometimes they always like, you know, swipe home, and then they get they get back, and then they get back into your phone and your text messages. Maybe they're deleting your, your images or whatever. Well, the application that you want them to be pinned and locked into, you wanna make sure you have it opened. You wanna tap on the little icon and you go to pin this app. Now, the only way that you can get out of it is if you were to, uh, well, here I have gestures turned on. So I have to swipe up and hold. Now, if you use the navigation buttons, I believe you have to press on two of them for about two or three seconds for it to you know, unlock. But you know, if your child is trying to get out of the application, even if they were to hit the power button, um, you know, they're not gonna be able to get out of it. And if they do turn off the phone, you still have to put in all your credentials to even you know, get it unlocked. So again, they are literally stuck in this application. They can't get back, they can't swipe out. Uh, the only thing is that if they learn how to read, then they know that they have to you know, swipe up. And then again, if they know how to read, you can do the setting to where you have to put in your pin 
or any of your biometrics to get out of it. So now you can get out of the application. Now, if you are, let's say, taking a look at your recent applications, you tap on the icon and you don't see the option of pin this app, you just have to turn it on. So you go inside of the settings and then you wanna find where it has your security and privacy. You're gonna scroll all the way down to other security settings. And then you scroll all the way down one more time for pin app. And that's really it. You turn it on and then you have another option right here, which says ask for pin before unpinning. Um, so what'll happen is let's say that you, you know, turn this off. All they have to do is swipe up from the bottom and hold and then it unlocks it and that's it. You know, it, it's best to always make sure that they have to know your pin or your password or fingerprint, face recognition, whatever the case may be, you know, because you are trying to lock them in. So again, you turn on the pin app, you open an app, you go inside of the recents button, and then uh, you tap the icon above the app and then you select pin this app. So it's everything that I literally just got done showing you. So let's say maybe, you know, you go inside of, you know, smart news. You have to remember, they are able to go through everything inside of here. Uh, they just cannot get out. So check this out. So again, you tap on the icon, pin this app, and then now they are stuck with inside of this app. They can't get out of it so they can read everything, you know, going on. Um, but again, they can't get out of the application. Even if they try to turn the power off, come back on, um, it's going to stay here. If they completely turn the phone off, all, you know, all the way, you would still have to know your credentials to even get into your phone in the first place. So here we go to unpin it. We swipe up and hold put in my credentials and then now we're able to get out of it. And now this very last one is dealing with your Samsung keyboard. So this is gonna be a, you know, a pretty big deal. So let's say that we just go you know, right up over here and uh, let's say that you're typing out some stuff. Uh, you know, um, let's see, how are you? So you're doing all this good stuff and, and I just did a period. Now, what? there's two things I wanna show you inside of here. The first one is that you're able to fully customize this bar right here. So let's say that we tap on this little icon. So these three little dots. Now I can actually take all of these out if I want to, because uh, you can fully customize this all the way from having absolutely nothing up here to having seven icons. So if I bring these down, you get the gist of it. You can take them all down. There's going to be nothing here. Uh, now I'm just left with three, you know, with three things sitting right here. Now, if you would like to fully customize this again, you just open this up. And then for anything that you want, you bring it up. And you can see one of the things is was Grammarly. Now I wanna show you that you can also turn on Grammarly as well. So if you don't have this option, uh, then at least you'd be able to use it. Now settings is one that you do wanna have up here. So I'm gonna put settings up over there. Uh, emojis, well, we already have emojis sitting over there. Voice input, I'm sure that's something that you guys would like to use. Let's see, keyboard size, floating, AR emoji, handwriting. I believe the last one I'm gonna put up there is gonna be this text editing. Now, if you haven't played with text editing, you know, it's pretty fun. So now that I got the Grammarly sitting up there, I added it into my toolbox. I think now once I start typing, I'd be able to see, you know, what it would be able to do to help me when it comes down to, you know, all my, my Grammarly stuff. So, hey. And with this one, when I tapped on Grammarly, it figured out that obviously my what's is wrong. The word what's doesn't seem to fit this context. Consider replacing it with a different one. So I'm gonna hit that right there. Again, right here, correctness, I'm gonna put on going. And that's pretty much about it. Now there's one more that more than likely it'll probably put, you know, a little parentheses at the end. So you can try it for 90 days for free. Right now I just have, you know, the 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 100% free version, you know, that's sitting on here. They also have like Grammarly Go if you want. I believe if you were to pay for this, it goes somewhere right around maybe $2.50 a month. So it's actually not too, you know, uh, expensive. So for my free version here, I have grammar, grammar corrections, spelling corrections, readability corrections, concise suggestions. If you do want to go for it, I mean, it's not a sponsor or anything. And, and obviously you can see I don't have it, but you have clarity suggestions, vocabulary enhancements, tone own recommendations, formality adjustments, inclusive language tips, fluency support, all free features. So everything that was down here. So, you know, you can take a look at it. Now, how you're able to add in Grammarly, if you wanted to use it, you just want to hit on your settings and then you're going to scroll all the way down and just go to select third party content to use. And then this is where you can turn on, you know, Bitmoji, Moji, Moji Talk, uh, Giphy and Tenor. Google Translate, and then Grammarly. So this is where you're able to turn it on. Uh, and then you can take a look at their privacy policy thingy right there too. And then up here, I also wanna show you this, the swipe and touch. So up over here, if you touch and hold on your space bar, you can change it. Currently, it's on the cursor control. You can also do voice input. So if you do a lot of voice input, you'd be able to press and hold in the space bar and you can get that done. So let's say that you're typing and 
uh, instead of you trying to like go through or press and hold and try to like, you know, move where you want something to go or you're, you're moving this little thingy or whatever, if you actually just press and hold on the, on the keyboard, you can actually, or the space bar, you can move this around and put it exactly where you want it to go. So then this way you can make all of your changes. Then the last thing that I do want to show you is this little uh, text edit thing. It's actually pretty fun. So let's say that you move on over, you hit select, you move this over. Uh, you can cut this, you can copy this, you can move it down so you can get rid of a word if you would like. And then the other cool thing too is that you can move all the way to the end of the sentence and then all the way to the very beginning of the sentence. Or you can just select all and you can do copy, cut, paste, however you, you know, whatever you're trying to do. And so, you know, it's one of those tool to, tools that's in there that you might not have known that was sitting there. Again, you just want to open up your keyboard. This is the Samsung keyboard. You just want to hit on those three dots and you can find what you want, bring them up, bring down the ones you don't want to use. So again, take a look at Grammarly, take a look at that whole, you know, text edit thingy. Uh, and then also too, don't forget that you can move your cursor with your space bar. So that is it for today's video. I wanted to show you five different things that you're able to do of, you know, maybe you didn't know with personalization and customization on your Samsung Galaxy devices. But if you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe, subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.